Who wrote the Bible? The Bible is like no other book in all of history. It's 1189 chapters long. It's an ancient book. It's the most widely read book in all of history, the most widely influential book. And maybe because of that, people have more questions about this book than any other book in history. So I want to walk you through the structure of the Bible because it's actually quite logical and wonderful and sort of amazing. Uh, the first time I ever opened a Bible, I was 13 years old. I was invited by some friends to go to a Christian meeting and I knew that they would be opening the Bible even though I never had. So I went to um, my family's bookshelf and I pulled out the family Bible. It was a King James Bible located right between Dante and some other Keats or some other poetic, historical, important literary book. And I remember pulling it out and dusting it off and thinking, wow, this is probably a spooky book because it was written by God. I, I went to that Christian meeting and they said, open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 13. And everybody took their Bibles and went flippity, flippity, flip. And they found the page. And I, I was so proud of myself for bringing a Bible that when they said, take out your Bibles, I thought, oh, I got this nailed. And then when they said, and turn to, I realized now I'm an outsider because I have no way of knowing where this next piece is. So I spent the entire sermon flipping from page to page to page to page, back and forth. Uh, and, and finally, I landed on the 1 Corinthians 13. I listened to what he was saying and what was written here, and they didn't match up. I looked more carefully at the top of the page, and I sounded it out, and it wasn't 1 Corinthians, it was 1 Chronicles. And then I spent the rest of the time looking. When he was about ready to pray and say amen, I found 1 Corinthians 13. And that was my first lesson in the Bible that I want to give you. It never occurred to me, since this is a book written by God, that it would be laid out logically, but it is. It never occurred to me that people would take great care to help you to navigate the thing, but they do. So at the front of every Bible is a table of contents. If I had just known that that night, I could have looked through here, found 1 Corinthians, seen the page number, and turned to the thing. But if you'll open a Bible, I want to talk to you about how this book was written, how it's structured, and all of that sort of thing. The Bible is one book, but it's also two books. It's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the Old Testament has 39 books and the New Testament has 27 books, which isn't really all that important to remember, but it's kind of interesting and easy if you remember that there are three letters in the word old and nine letters in the word testament. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. There are three letters in the word new and nine letters in the word testament. And three times nine is 27. There are 27 books in the New Testament. The Old Testament is laid out not just according to what was written first, but according to type of literature. So there are three types of literature in the Old Testament. There's historic literature, poetic literature, and prophetic literature. There are 17 Old Testament history books, five Old Testament poetry books, and 17 Old Testament prophecy books. So there's a symmetry there. Then you can divide even further. If you look at the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, those are the books of the Torah, or the Law of Moses. Five of those, and then 12 other historical books, five poetical books, and then the prophets are divided into five major prophets, and they're called major because they're simply longer books than the minor prophets, and then 12 minor prophets. So it goes 17, 5, 17, or within historical, 5, 12, poetical, 5, and within uh, poetic, prophetical, 5, 12. So you've got a lot of fives and twelves, and you've got some symmetry there. The New Testament also has historical and prophetical literature, but instead of poetical literature, there's a group of letters in the middle of the book. So the New Testament lays out with five historical books, four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the book of Acts, which is the story of the birth of and the, the early development of the church. And then there are epistles or letters in the middle going all the way to the second to last book of the New Testament. And the final book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation, is a prophetic book as well. If you look through this table of contents, uh, 
we know pretty well who wrote almost every single one of these books and how they were preserved. For instance, we know that Moses wrote almost all of the Torah. He probably didn't write the last part, which is an epitaph of his, his death on Mount Nebo. But in Deuteronomy chapter 31, in verse 26, God tells Moses, take this book of the law, which would be those first five books, and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. If you remember the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, there's an ark that was built. It was placed in the tabernacle of God. God tells Moses to take his books and place them in the safest place and the most sacred place for Israel, which would be inside the ark, inside the Holy of Holies. And we believe that after that, as books were recognized as inspired by God, they were placed alongside the books of Moses so that the Old Testament books were collected there. The New Testament books were collected in a little different manner. They were collected by the church and copied over and over and over again, over time recognized. We'll actually deal with that in a separate video. Uh, but the books of the Bible were recognized one after another after another, and one of their marks is that somebody who was anointed, prophetic, uh, or an apostle wrote them. So the first five books were written by Moses, then Joshua wrote his book. We believe Samuel wrote Judges and Ruth and part of First Samuel. There was a whole school of prophets that probably contributed to Second Samuel and, and some of First Samuel and Kings, both of those books. Ezra wrote Chronicles, Ezra, and probably used Nehemiah's journal to write the book of Nehemiah. Uh, Esther was written by, we're not sure, but perhaps her uncle Mordecai uh, in, in, uh, during the exile period. Job, we don't know exactly who wrote it. Some think Moses did, some think Job himself. If Job was a real life character, not just a character in a play that was acted out, then his book is probably the oldest book in the Old Testament, somewhere around 1900 BC. Uh, Psalms were written by a number of people. 72 of the 150 were written by David himself. Proverbs was written mostly by Solomon and then some later kings, Hezekiah and such. Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs was written by Solomon. And then the, the prophetic books were written by those whose uh, names they bear. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were written by, this is going to surprise you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew was one of Jesus' original 12 disciples, as was John. Mark was a disciple of both Peter and Paul, so he got uh, Peter's eyewitness accounts and hung around with Paul and heard a lot of preaching there, wrote, wrote out his account. Probably the first book in the New Testament was Mark, if not then perhaps 1 Thessalonians, which was one of Paul's letters. Uh, Luke was a doctor, therefore a scientist, and a very precise historian who traveled with the Apostle Paul uh, and did some live eyewitness interviews, even though he wasn't an eyewitness to the birth and, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, the middle books there then, 13 of them are all written by the Apostle Paul. Book of Hebrews, we actually don't know who wrote. There's some speculation uh, about that, but it was clearly anointed and it has what's called the marks of canonicity, as do all 66 of the books. We'll cover what the marks of canonicity are in a future video as well. James, interestingly, is not the Apostle James who was with Jesus during his uh, earthly ministry, but Jesus' half-brother James, who became a Christian after the resurrection of Christ. There are a lot of reasons to believe that, that Jesus was the Son of God. Maybe one of the strongest ones is, what, what would it take for you to be convinced that your brother was the Son of God? James believed it enough to become an active member of the church and actually write one of the books of the New Testament, as did another brother. If you drop down on your table of contents, the last epistle in the Bible is the book of Jude, and that was written by one of Jesus' other half-brothers. The books of Peter were written by Peter, the books of John were written by John the Apostle, and the book of Revelation was written by, by John as well. That's the Bible. Again, it's 1189 chapters. Every word of it claims to be inspired and have, have the ability to speak to you. And if you read it and let it, it will speak to you.